Hi, in this video we are going to see about nerve action potential. So the frequently asked questions from this part are Describe the ionic basis of different phases of nerve action potential and draw and label a nerve action potential. So let's see each one by one. First of all, what's the definition of an action potential? An action potential is a rapid changes in the membrane potential that spreads rapidly along a nerve fiber membrane when stimulated by a threshold stimulus. So basically there are changes in the membrane potential that occurs when they are stimulated by a threshold stimulus. So now we can write about the phases of action potential. So to depict that in a diagram we can draw the time in milliseconds on the x axis and the membrane potential in millivolt on the y axis. So we know that the resting membrane potential for a neuron is minus 70 millivolt. Right? So when a stimulus is applied, after a brief latent period, there will be increase in the potential. So initially there will be a small latent period and after that there will be a slight, there will be increase in potential from minus 70 to minus 55 millivolt. Now once it reaches this threshold potential of minus 55 millivolt, there will be rapid increase in the potential. So this phase is known as the phase of depolarization. Now once it reaches a plus 35 millivolt, the potential will start decreasing and that phase is known as the repolarization phase. Once the repolarization phase is reached, the, the potential will continue to decrease even after the resting membrane potential and that phase is known as after hyperpolarization. And after this stage, the membrane potential will come back to its resting membrane potential. So these are the different phases of action potential. So the phases of action potential are initially we've got a latent period and then we've got a phase of depolarization in which the membrane potential increases up till plus 35 millivolt and then we've got a phase of repolarization which is decrease of the membrane potential and then we've got a stage of after hyperpolarization. Okay. So now we'll see the ionic basis of action potential. So the major channels involved are voltage gated sodium channels. So in resting state, the sodium channel has got two gates. One is the activation gate and the other is an activation gate. So normally no sodium enters into the cell when the cell is in a resting state. But once a depolarization stimulus is applied, what happens is there will be opening up of this activation gate. So now the, there will be influx of sodium into the cell. So initially the sodium entry is slow. That is when the potential changes from minus 70 to minus 55. Okay. But once this threshold potential of minus 55 is reached, there will be rapid entry of sodium into the cell. So because more and more positive charge is entering the cell, the potential changes from minus 70 to plus 35 millivolt. Okay. So that is because of this rapid entry of sodium. But once plus 35 is reached, then it, the overshoot is only up to plus 35. It does not increase more than that. Why? That is because the closure of the inactivation gate. So once that potential is reached, immediately the channel is in an inactivated state because of this closure of the inactivated gate, inactivation gate. So that is how the potential will go down from plus, plus 35 to minus 70 again. Okay. So this is the role of voltage gated sodium channels. So in a flowchart manner, we can depict this like this. When a stimulus is applied, there will be opening up a voltage gated sodium channel, which will lead to increased permeability of the sodium channel and there will be increased flow of sodium into the cell. See positive charge is entering into the cell. So there will be a depolarization of the membrane potential and this will in turn cause increased opening up a voltage gated sodium channel, which means it is a positive feedback. So once that's a slight depolarization membrane potential, again there will be increased opening up a voltage gated sodium channel. So this, this cycle will go on until the potential of plus 35 is reached and there will be inactivation of sodium channels. Right? So this is the uh, role of voltage gated sodium channels in action potential. So now we will see the role of voltage gated potassium channels. Potassium channels have got just one gate when compared to our sodium channels and this is closed in the resting state. So normally there will be no efflux of potassium out of the cell, right? 
But when there is a depolarizing stimulus, there will be opening up of this channel which will cause efflux of potassium out of the cell. Now the major difference here when compared to a sodium channel is that the activation of potassium channels are much slower. So this slow activation of potassium channels which causes efflux of positive charge out of the cell and, will, and so the potential of the cell will move from plus 35 to minus 70. That means this is, this is another cause of this repolarization phase. Okay. So now we will see the role of potassium, voltage gated potassium channels. See, so when there is a depolarization of the membrane by the sodium in influx, there will be opening up a voltage gated potassium channel. And this will cause increased permeability of the potassium channel and potassium, there will be increased flow of potassium out of the cell. Right? Now because potassium is flowing out of the cell, there will be repolarization of the membrane potential and this repolarization will actually decrease opening up of the voltage gated potassium channel which means here there is a negative feedback as compared to the depolarization phase. Okay. So this is how our uh, repolarization phase occurs via the voltage gated potassium channels. Now why is there an after hyperpolarization or what is the physiological basis of this after hyperpolarization? That is because the slow efflux of potassium continues even after the resting membrane potential is reached. Okay. And this will cause the prolonged phase of hyperpolarization. See remember I said that there is slow activation or slow efflux of potassium. Right. So even after resting membrane potential is reached the slow efflux of potassium continues. So that is why we have got an after hyperpolarization state. Okay. Now we have to know about the changes in the sodium and potassium conductance during the course of action potential. If this uh, ionic base of action potential is asked as a 5 or 8 mark question, it is good that you draw this diagram also. Okay, So just like in an action potential diagram, we can first draw the time in milliseconds on the x-axis and uh, membrane potential in y-axis to show the action potential first. Okay, So this is our action potential. Now during this action potential, how is the permeability or how is the conductance of sodium and potassium changing? Okay, So for that we will mark the ionic permeability on the y-axis here again. And then for sodium, here we can see that the depolarization phase is mainly due to our opening up of the sodium channel. See so remember we had said that there is an activation inactivation gate and that there is rapid influx of sodium. So it is the opening up a sodium channel that is responsible for our depolarizing phase. Okay, because the maximum permeability is during at that time. Now the permeability of potassium is maximum during the repolarization phase, right? Because there is slow activation of potassium. So the repolarization phase is mainly due to opening up of the uh, potassium channel as well as an activation of sodium channels. Okay. So now we can just mention about the role of calcium ions also. So calcium ions bind on to the exterior surface of the sodium channel and this in turn will alter the electrical state of the sodium channel and so alter the voltage that is needed to open the sodium channel. Which in other words calcium decreases the excitability of the membrane and stabilize it. Okay. So that is how calcium stabilizes our membrane potential. Right. So if there is decreased calcium what will happen? There will be increased excitability. Right. So that is the role of calcium uh, ions to maintain our membrane potential. Right. Now for applied aspects you can write about the various ion channel blockers like uh, how local anesthetics act, what is the role of sodium channel blockers and what are the potassium channel blockers. You can just mention that for uh, scoring additional marks. So in a nutshell, in, uh, in this video, we have discussed about what is the definition of action potential. You can write that in the introduction part. And then the different phases of action potential. We have said that this got a latent phase, a phase of depolarization and a phase of repolarization. Then a phase of after hyperpolarization. Then we talked about the ionic basis, the role of voltage gated sodium channel as well as voltage gated potassium channels. And then some applied aspects. Okay. So now I hope you know what to write when such a question is asked for the exam. Thank you.